What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Welcome back into another MLB The Show 22 tips and tricks video. And this is actually just a general MLB The Show tips and tricks video, but we're going to be talking about scouting today and a little bit of information that I wanted to break down further that I've certainly addressed in multiple videos, but I really want to talk about the implications of scouting age, scouting MLB ETA, scouting potential, all of these factors within the scouting system within franchise mode within MLB The Show because I did a video recently on Madden discussing the importance of scouting age with players within within that game but I've never really done a dedicated video on it within MLB The Show and it is something that is absolutely worth considering because these are some very important factors that tend to be overlooked whenever you're drafting within franchise mode but for someone like me that does go further into franchise modes and I'm sure for a lot of you guys it's very important that you guys get the best possible draft picks that you can to help continue to bolster your roster and continue the influx of young talent into your team to sustain your success over a long period of time. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the draft class that I currently have within my Pirates franchise right now, and we're going to compare some players, and we're going to probably sim to the draft and, and compare some of the actual ratings that you get off of these players and talk a little bit about the differences between certain ages and things like that because we've talked about how important age is within this game you can see just on the first page of players here which are all potentially 80 potential players uh, there's ranges in age from 18 all the way up to 22 years old that's a four-year difference and that can mean a lot of difference in development and that also can mean a big difference in how high of an overall these players can actually get to first and foremost whenever you actually get get to the draft or when you're scouting within MLB The Show, you're going to end up with a lot of players scouted that potentially have that good development that you want them to have, and they might have a good overall, and they might be a certain age. But what we want to really compare here, and one of the things that sort of lines up but can vary is going to be age and MLB ETA. These two things are not necessarily linked with each other because as you can see right here, we have a fully scouted 22 year old starting pitcher who doesn't have an ETA till 2027 plus. But here we have a younger player, 20 years old, and he's fully scouted starting pitcher, same position, and his ETA is 2024. So that presents a difference between their actual overall whenever they're going to be drafted. Uh, and that's really what it comes down to. So MLB ETA and overall are essentially going to be directly tied to each other. So if this player's overall is coming in at around a 70 or above even, we know that this player is going to be pretty much MLB ready in the next season or very, very soon. And that's why he's getting this 2024 ETA. So your overall and your MLB ETA are going to be directly linked with each other. So we also want to consider that in coordination with the player's age. So think about this for a second if you have a 20 year old player that has that 70 overall 80 potential he's a 2024 ETA are you going to want to draft that player when compared with the same exact statistics for a player let's say for example this player up here this relief pitcher was a 2024 ETA we know his potential is 80 let's say we had him fully scouted and we know his overall is a 70 as well he's 18 years old which player you are you going to want to draft so we have have to consider those two things in tandem with each other. Now, they're clearly a different position, but let's say all factors are the same. Both starting pitchers, for example, both we know have the 2024 ETA. Everything else is held the same. You're going to want to draft the younger player, and that's just simply because you're going to have more developmental years for that player, and you're going to have more room for them to reach that max overall within the game. So age becomes one of, if not the most important factors within drafting within the game and that's pretty much true for any sports game and any sport in real life teams are always going to be looking to strike the balance between the youngest player with the highest upside and the highest talent a lot of teams think that they can take younger players and mold them even further they they think they can take certain skill sets and mold them to what they need them to be but nonetheless you get more years with a player if they're younger you got to think about
think about it this way. So some of these guys that are 22 years old, and I know that this isn't necessarily how it works within the game, but some of these guys that are 21, 22 years old, they're, they've still been playing. They've been playing for a couple of extra years, and so there's more wear and tear on their bodies, and that counts for pretty much any sport. Now, we certainly have to consider many more factors beyond that, though. There's all of these factors working in tandem here for us to decide who we're going to draft. So let's take a look at a couple of quick examples here. Starting pitchers right now, we have three starting pitchers scouted, and they're different ages, different MLB ETAs, different potentials, all that stuff. So we're not just naturally going to pick the younger player. We know that all three of these players are scouted with 100% accuracy. We know that they all have potential uh, development that is in the highest category here. They're all scored, scoring in that 80 bracket, which is going to give them somewhere in that B to A range. We know that those factors are the same, but we know that their ages are different. So we're not just naturally going to draft the 19-year-old player. We also have to consider the fact that Cameron Castilla has a natural overall that's going to be higher to start off with. So there's a certain trade-off here. Moving on to the closing pitcher position, we actually have quite a few of these guys scouted, and this might give us a good representation of what not to do whenever drafting players. And that is one of the players identified here is a 2027 plus ETA. He's 80 potential and only 60 overall on our scouting, Garrett White here, but he's 23 years old. This is one of the older players that we've seen in this draft class. So we're talking about a player that is very low overall that is going to take quite a while to get up to a serviceable MLB level for us and we're looking at a player that's already 23 years old. So let's say at a 60 overall, this player hopefully has a potential and hopefully develops at about five overall points per year if he even comes in at a 60 overall. That means in two years, he'll be 25 years old and then he'll be a 70. Two years beyond that, so four years, he'll be 27 years old and he'll finally be hitting an 80. He'll be pretty much at the end of his development phase and he'll have only reached an 80 overall. So age is something you definitely need to look at at the it's why it's one of the first things that shows up here on the uh, on the scouting tab is because the most important things that you're looking at are all going to be right here on this screen and they're almost in order you're looking at age accuracy of your scouting MLB ETA potential and overall so like I said Garrett White here might be a player that some people choose to draft simply because of his you know projected 80 overall uh, but ultimately he's 23 three years old and you're going to be risking not even really having an opportunity to utilize this player because by the time he actually reaches a decent overall he will be 27 28 maybe even 29 years old that's considering if he does well every single year and steadily progresses there's the chance here that this guy's 80 potential is a low b and there's the potential that he doesn't even do well in the minor league system and he never sees your major league team because of the fact that you drafted a player that's already at the age of 23. So we're going to take a look at a draft real quick. I've simulated up to the draft. Hopefully my team did a half decent job of scouting players for the rest of that month that we had. We're going to be sitting at pick 15. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of these players that get drafted or players that are potentially on our board. So I'm going to sort by accuracy here. I know that I have some players with some potentially really good accuracy right now. And if I'm taking a look at this draft class just very quickly, the players that I have the most accurate reports on are actually pretty solid players. I have a player with 75 potential, 80, 70, and 80. These are some pretty solid options to take a look at. So the first thing I'm going to take a look at is their ages. Okay, well, the first guy I already mentioned earlier, Garrett White, 23 years old, 80 potential. We know his overall is not the greatest. He's going to take a while to get to the MLB. He's not going to be the one that I pick, not with the first pick, whenever I have other potentially better options available for me. Now, these other three guys are very close in terms of age and potential and things like that. Uh, this starting pitchers 19 this starting pitchers 20 and this closing pitchers 20 so very close in age so let's go ahead and take a look at their combination of potential and overall well we see that this starting pitcher has 80 70 this one is 70 60 this one's 75 65 so just on a general basis i think that it's pretty clear to stand out that this starting pitcher is going to be the best option because the combination of age he's 20 years old he's not much older than the other prospects that we're talking about you know we could maybe benefit by taking a 19 year old 
we might be able to go down here into some of these other players that we're less confident about and take an 18 year old and gain a couple years on that player but you know that's that's really diving deep and we'll have options to to look at some of those things in the next round so the pretty clear-cut choice here is the nice balance between a young player at 20 years old we have really good accuracy 2024 ETA, which means his overall is going to be coming in at a very solid point. And we know that he's going to have pretty solid development or pretty solid potential. So let's go ahead and take him with our first pick and see what we get as an opportunity in the second round. Beyond second, third round, you're probably not, unless you're picking at the top of the draft order or unless your scouts did a really good job, you're probably not going to have access to a lot of potentially very good players at that point. Here's what I'm going to do in the second round. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Anthony Mora here, who is that 75 potential player starting off at a decent overall, and we'll get a decent look at what that player can potentially compare as. And then what I'm going to do, hopefully, if he's available, is take that Garrett White player in the third round here. So we're into round three now. We've taken three players. What I want to do is I want to take one more player to compare against, and that'll just be picking a random player up here at the top that shows 80 potential. So we get we have a handful now going all the way up from JJ Briggs up to the top that have have a, a potential of 80. So how do you distinguish between these players? Well, we do exactly what we just talked about. We look at the best combination here between potential, overall, and age. And so I immediately am drawn to the fact that I see a couple of players with potential and age that are pretty, uh, pretty in line with what I would want if I did have accurate scouting on these players. So I'm looking at these two 19-year-olds here in the middle. Both have 80 potential. One of them has 60 overall. One of them has 70 overall projected. Now, that's not to say either of these players are going to be good. We'll look at it after the fact, but just in a basic guessing game and a basic comparative analysis between these players, this guy looks like he's probably going to be the best out of these players. Now, there is this starting pitcher as well that is 21 years old that has the 75 overall, but again, he's two years older. So the, the difference there is, is not too significant. We're talking about a difference between 70, 75. That overall is not actually going to project, project out to be that much of a difference. So we're going to go ahead and take Joseph Zavala here, who has that 2024 projection. And here you have it, guys. We actually ended up with a pretty good class of players here, to be honest with you. So our first pick, Cameron Castilla, who looked to be the best out of all of them, is definitely the best out of all of them in terms of combination between overall and potential. So he's a 73 overall with B potential. Now his stats are skewed because he's coming in with crazy good stamina, but nonetheless, he did turn out to be the player that's the best in combination. He's only 20 years old. He's a 73 overall with B potential in comparison to Garrett White, who we knew was going to have pretty high potential. He has 88 potential, but he's coming in at a 23 year old. We projected out about a 60 overall, and that's what he came in as. So he's going to take some development to get there. And we have to, if we draft a player like that, and you guys have to, if you take a player like that, be prepared for him to not really be able to contribute to your team for a little while. And really, by the time he gets up there, he's going to be towards the end of his 20s and might not have that much time to actually contribute to your team. So that's just the trade off that we see there. And then we also got Anthony Mora, who was a pretty interesting prospect, uh, who we saw that was 20 years old. He had a slightly higher overall, pretty good potential. So, you know, the strategy of taking a look at the combination of factors in the way that I've told you guys to today resulted in us getting two really good first picks. And then that third guy ended up falling to us in the third round anyway. And he looks like he may end up being a pretty good pick for us in the end, if he can have some solid years in the minors and really develop in a positive way. Finally, the one that we just threw a dart at the dartboard was actually a pretty legitimate selection, and he turned out to have 82 potential at 19 years old and a 61 overall. He might be one of the better picks that we had here. Now, his potential only 82, so it's not on the super high end, but there's no way to really know that. Nonetheless, though, he's going to be a pretty solid player considering the age and overall and potential combination. You can throw a dart at the board, but if you do it in an educated way or if you do it in a uh, calculated way, you can 
still come away with a really good player. You don't always have to have a player scouted in a perfect way uh, or, or 100% to, to know what you're going to get. If you know that you're getting a player that is a, a decent age, that is projected to have a decent potential and maybe a decent overall, you might come away with a really good player like we did with the opportunity here for Joseph Zavala. And not to mention, he's got 94 velocity, 84 stamina without even taking a look at him uh, in the draft class. He's looking like he could be a very, very good player. I hope that this information was useful or valuable to you in some way. And if it was, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you have a good one.